Morning, so a quick recap on the house today. Um, we've got the guys coming to fit the plant room equipment for the ground source heat pump and all the underfloor heating stuff. So they're coming next week. So we've just concreted the floor, waiting for that to go off now. Get that insulated, final screed across the top. We've also put a drain in the middle of the plant room so that if anything has got to be drained down in terms of the tank, the system, whatever it is, then you've got somewhere for it to go rather than obviously being encased inside. So we put the drain in, sent it through outside, which will connect into all the underground, underground drainage afterwards. Um, and then we'll just put a gully pot in the top in there. So them guys are coming next week. Roof is going on, insulation is done. There's mountains happened since you guys last here. So I'll show you some of that. Okay, so last time you guys were here, I think we were looking at the roof trusses and stuff. Since then, we've obviously insulated everything. We've chosen to insulate it from the top because of the amount of bracing that there was on the underside and inside of the building. That job is worse than the roof trusses. It's absolutely boring. It's constantly cutting insulation up and down the scaffold like a bloody yo-yo and you end up looking like a snowman at the end of the day with all the fines over you so hated that job more than i hated the roof trusses but it's done now we're fully insulated and then we put or mick and the guys have come and put the roof on so the construction side of the roof is let's go away from them it is Okay, so the construction side of the roof is, you've obviously got your roof trusses on, which is the piece of timber that goes from one side to the other. And then the insulation goes in between them. But then on the top of that, you have a fully breathable Tyvek membrane, basically, which you layer, you, you run your run of um, that out along the length of the roof. And then your next piece comes along and on the top of each piece that you lay out, it's basically got measurements and guides to what picture the roof and what overlap that you give. So you give a good overlap, and then on the top side of that, you batten through. So your battens are spaced accordingly then to what material you're putting on the roof. In our case, we've gone for slate. It is aesthetically pleasing, and I think it's one of the better products to put on your roof. So that's why we went for it. Um, so then your slate goes on and is fixed with copper nails. So, and they're nailed through to the tiling lath. That's it, that's the roof finished then. On the eaves where the roof comes down at the bottom, you've got this form of a, a kick that they call it. So that bottom tile just slightly raises up just to keep the pressure on, keep the gap nice and tight at the bottom. And on between the slate and the brick corbel in my um, construction here, um, like I say, there are different types of construction, but we went for brick corbel. So what we've done is that's got like a layer of, it's almost like a thick felty material um, that's laid out first, which gives that weather seal and that flows into the gutter. So any rain coming through or gets through them bottom tiles or anything like that flows onto that and into the gutter and away it goes. On the gable ends, we went for a dry verge system. So a wet verge is you would have your tiles or your slate or whatever it is and you would sit them on a bed of mortar and point them all up all the way along. We've not gone for that. Um, I didn't want to see any cement on the sides and I think these, um, these metal flashings or aluminium flashings that we put on, I think they look quite smart, especially from the floor. Nice, neat, crisp edge, contrasting colour to the corbel. So I think that looks proper good. Um, and then chimney's built since you were last here. So chimney is now up, we've got the pots on went for the crowns um, just because I like the look of them all the lead works on lead works quite tricky and intricate um, and in fact we'll show you some of mix lead welding it's not a practice that's often done anymore but he's um, he was probably around when they invented it actually so we'll show you some of what Mick has done in terms of the lead welding um, but all the leads on and basically what you have Around the chimney connection there, um, you basically have, I might have to check this with Wayne, but you have soakers and you have something else. So on the underside of each tile, there is a piece of lead that comes along and goes up the side of the chimney wall, which any water on the roof hits that, runs down and runs onto the next tile below, rather than being able to get in. But then you've got an upstand, you've got an upstand like that, and if that's your chimney wall, you've obviously got a gap here that you could get water ingress. So what they have then is this thing that, uh, this next piece of lead that is basically keyed into the brickwork. So you, you take the mortar out the brickwork joint, you make it 
um, in like a triangle shape, you push it in, you bed it back up, and that sits out and caps over that piece that you've got there. So that creates this weather seal. So any water then running down the chimney runs, hits that and runs over onto the tile. So that's how that's gone on. Afterwards, that looks like a bit of a sh like a saw edge, if you like, like jagged edges or shark tooth or whatever they call it, all the way down. So that's all in and on. And then the far side, we're gonna have a quick look at the valley. So then when we come along now, we've obviously got the lead work in the valley. Um, the valley is that piece there where two roofs join, the water will come off them, hit that valley, roll down, and go straight into the gutter at the bottom, which will be in a corner shape there like that. Now, um, I've been quite fussy over the lead valley because I like my straight lines and clean edges. There's two ways of cutting the slate as it comes in. There is mechanically cutting it, as in running up there with some form of grinder, still saw, whatever it may be to actually physically cut it. Um, I didn't really want that because it doesn't look like a natural cut edge then or they've got some form of effectively a pair of scissors I think that they just literally snip through the slate to where they want it so it gives that natural look when it's been cut. That's what we've gone for. Super impressed actually because you stand and look from the floor and all you can see is two super crisp lines, same gap all the way up, nice lead flashing that's in there. We've put the patination all, all over it so it won't go white and murky and, and dusty. So I'm pretty impressed with the valley, that's all gone in really well. Black and white to colour now though. <laughs> So, we're in the house, this is insulation, this is some of the bracing of all the trusses and stuff that we've had to put in. So basically the chipboard or OSB, as, as you can see it, them sections form all of that K-brace system that we mentioned previously, but then in and around every single gap has got to be insulated. So in this roof, we've got 150 mil of insulation board, foil back both sides. And what we've got there is, you slot it in between the joists, um, or in between the trusses, as we've done. Um, that's all cut to size. We've battened through the bottom because we've put it in from the top. So to stop it sliding all the way through, um, even though the bits that I cut were super perfectly snug, nice fit, everything weighing cut pretty much fell back out and we had to make bigger ones because he's no good at measuring up. But by the by, um, I did it right, Wayne did it wrong. But anyway, we've set all that in and the, the laths will come off when we come to uh, put the plasterboard on. Now, because we wanted a vaulted ceiling, which that is your vaulted ceiling, basically, what we're looking at now. So when we do that, a normal loft construction would have had, which we've got 
in that part of the house would have had boards going this way, which you then would insulate the loft roll and all the rest of it. Because we've not got that and we want the vaulted ceilings, what we're having now is an insulated plasterboard that goes on. So think of a standard plasterboard as thick as your finger or 12 mil or whatever it is, 15 mil. And then on the back side of that, there'll be a full blown insulation board of whatever thickness is, is spec'd on the, um, from the architect. So what that stops is any cold bridging. Now, obviously the insulation will stop um, any cold transfer from outside to in, but where the timbers are, the transfer value is obviously far higher, even though it's timber, transferring cold through the timber, which is what that full-blown system that we're gonna put on the inside is for. So that'll stop the, what we call cold bridging, which is um, a route in which the cold can get from the outside to the in. So we're, we're eradicating that with the system that we're putting over the top. Um, so all that's in and basically what we've got to do next is we've got to insulate this floor now. So we've screed it over the top of the block and beam, um, which is like a, a, a wet sort of slurry based cement system that we put on and we brush it round. Um, doesn't look very pretty, but ultimately it's just to seal all the joints and gaps. That's all in and done, dried. We brought all the insulation in now. So we'll put the insulation throughout the entire floor. We'll visqueen the whole thing and make it almost like a tank underfloor heating guys come in they put all their pipe work here there and everywhere and then we screed over the top of that so I'll show you some of that in the next video but that this room basically is ready for that and all we've got to do now is the wall um, plate that's on we just need to fix them ties now to the wall which we couldn't do because we had we've got a scaffold in here while we were insulating so um, Wayne and Chris are here today they're fitting the floor joists or the ceiling joists in the other part of the roof we're going to doing Morning. Morning. Alright. Yeah, you? Yeah, what are you up to? Just the last of these ceiling infills, mate. Okay, sound. All going to plan? Yep, all ready now. Right, okay, so we just need Mr Chubbyford now then to come and layer some electric points out, do we? Put pipes of electric round. Yeah, we need laying out logistics. Keep recovery. Right, anything you need from me? No, we're all good, mate. So, you're not having a sandwich. Okay, so we've got a meeting now with the planning consultants, Ben Wharf and Ben Kettle. Um, they're coming to Fowler and Gilbert. We're going to go through a few bits around there on the big site, on the existing site, and then they're coming back here, and there's a few more things that I want to get sorted out for the next stages of the farm. So if you like what you've seen, hit subscribe, ring the bell, catch you guys next time, and we will leave you with a house build montage. Let's <laughs> go.